Hello, I'm Dwight Norris of Fishing at Work, and today we're going to talk about what I said I was going to do, but I've chosen not to, and that is to purchase an inflatable fishing kayak. Now, you're probably wondering why I said and boasted about getting an inflatable fishing kayak so I can go out in the water because it's hot weather and the fish are going deeper, which is a reality, and having the, uh, the wherewithal to think that I could get everything going and pumped up and out there and having a good fishing time and getting back in time and it kind of seems a little you know far-fetched per se and you know what if you were thinking that you were right I was pushing the limits I had to test it I had to add, I didn't really test it but I went through the theory and did my research and looked at what people that I knew were doing it and how long it took them to do things and all the other things I was totally not thinking about to actually get this done and it just reduces the level of enjoyment of fishing down to what I believe is that's too low. Now there are different types of inflatable kayaks. You can get big ones, you can get small ones, there are single persons, there are, there are two person ones if you're tall like me. There are hard shell ones. There, there's a mirage, but I'm right now I'm focusing on the inflatable ones. Every boat has a possibility of being used, but in my current situation, I commute to work either by bus or bike, and then I work in the city, like an actual, you know, there's skyscrapers and stuff, and there's a few blocks from there. There's a river full of fish. And it's only it only takes 10 minutes to get there so thinking about that there's a reality that they say and in practice it takes about five minutes to pump up an inflatable kayak which is fantastic theoretically that will leave you in my current situation about 25 to 30 minutes of fishing but there were so many other um, things to think about which I'll be describing more so on my 10-step process for fishing at work in an extra section and I'm actually thinking about doing a video series of those that go into depth this being one of those things that I'll need to go into depth about when you can use a boat when you go fishing at work depending on your situation obviously it's easier to have a car it's easier if you can lock up a boat of some sort or if you can roll one out on your own given time with maybe electric and you have all your stuff together and you don't have to carry it around. So I actually made a list of things while I was work about why this is a problem. So first of all, self-bailing. I was looking at it and I was like self-bailing. I was like, oh, why would you put a I had a self-bailing kayak a self-bailing kayak? And I was like, oh yes. If you're going to do all the work of rowing with a paddle, you're going to need drip rings to make sure the water doesn't roll down your arms and get you wet. So that goes into another thought. Hmm. I have to wear, I have to switch into clothing. That's a totally different subject. Subject, And I'm going to get wet. There's that problem. Also, there might be water that gets inside of your inflatable kayak and then you're sitting in it. Also, not fun. Maybe you should wear swim trunks when you go fishing. Hmm. Seems like more time. Then there's the fact that you're doing paddling instead of using a motor. That is an expenditure of energy that you don't want to actually do. Walking to a place or biking to a place is enough energy for most people, and they want to. They want to make this whole fishing network thing really easy. So the last thing you want to do is start sweating and then you finish fishing and you're still sweating. What if it's 90 degrees outside and you're out in the hot blazing sun, it's hitting you from above, it's reflecting off the water and hitting you from below, you get that nice double tan everybody wants except you don't want it right now. And you're sweating and you're nasty and you start to stink and then you have to think, oh god I gotta go back to work, I gotta get this thing you know, broken down put my backpack, it weighs like 40 pounds, crazy. And I'm expected not to stink. 
you know, don't have to look into other features, you know, use some handy wipes or something, or find a shower somewhere. More time, more time, more time, more effort, more, more money. Not good for us. So, that was one problem that does dove into many other problems that I just, as a culmination, came to a, a blatant no to all of this. But I'll go through all of them just to be uh, complete. Next one is, uh, yes, the pre and post prep time. So let's go through this step by step. So you have an inflatable kayak. Great. What do you need if you say you're walking or biking or taking a bus or some other mode of transportation that isn't your own vehicle that you own, like a car or a truck or whatever like that? You can just throw it in the, in the back seat. So you have to think about it. It's usually an inflatable kayak, one to two person. It's in a way between 30 and 40 pounds. And it may be uh, put in a certain way, like a, a Seblar slash Coleman, Colorado, two, one or two person kayak. They have those are nice. You can wear them as backpacks, but it's still 30 to 40 pounds on your back and it's kind of unwieldy, and you might be carrying something else, like a briefcase, or or your gym clothes, or whatever else you, you want to do some other day. But like, obviously that day you're going to go fishing, so you're probably not going to use gym clothes. And then they, they, you can also use as a handbag, so it's, it's just weighty, and you if you're trying to be discreet, that's a problem. And then you have to think about all the other things you need to bring with it. You, have, you need to paddle, because you're obviously not going to bring a, a marine battery and a Minn Kota 40 pound thrust trolling motor with you. Probably not the most discreet thing to do unless you're going to lock it up outside, which is not an advisable thing to do in the city. Maybe where you are, it's a possibility. But for me, no. So there's that. And then you have to think about oh, wait, I can't go there in my dress clothes. Maybe I'm wearing a suit. Maybe I'm wearing some khaki pants and a in a collared shirt. Don't want to get that wet. Can't trust those drip rings on, the, on those paddles. Not good. So, okay, maybe I can uh, change into my clothes when I leave in the bathroom in about three minutes. I can pop on a nice pair of swim trunks and a shirt, and boom, I'm out there. And if anybody asks, I can tell them the truth. I'm going fishing, or you not tell them the truth and tell them I'm going for a swim at the Y. I don't know. You can come up with your own solution, or you can ask me, and we can, you know, come up with a good uh, solution to your problem. And besides clothing, I'm trying to remember this off the top of my head, uh, you have your fishing gear, which you have in your nice little backpack, lures, um, rod and reel, and you know the basics for what you want to fish that day. As I said before, you probably want to choose something specific. You want to fish with worms, want to fish with a spinnerbait, want to fish with a grub, etc., etc., etc choose something for where you're going to fish and how you're going to fish it. So you're probably going to use a boat, you're going to go to deeper water, and you want to fish a Carolina rig, or or just put on maybe a, a nice little worm, a live worm, or some other live bait. That's cool. And you have to prepare for that as well. And then you have to get all this stuff and take it to the river or the lake or wherever is near you. For me, you know, that's a 10 minute walk of all that stuff with me multiple bags. One, not easy to do. If it's hot weather, it's going to make me sweat. If there's people around, they're going to be like, what the heck is Dwight doing with two bags? It looks like he's carrying around an army pack. It's been enlisted. Anyway, that's not uh, good either. So that's the pre part. And you get there and you have to roll it all out, get it all prepped. You have to pump it up. You have, oh yeah, you have to, uh, you have the pump with you, a two-way action pump. They're usually very light, but they're usually large. I'm talking like one to two feet across, and it's like a one to two foot square box. Generally, that's the space. That's pretty big. You know, that's the width of your, your backpack. You know, not easy to hide. That's something else you have to take with you. Ugh, it's the worst time. The hot. Um, then you have to pump it up. Then you have to get all your stuff together, then you have to make sure your clothes are on right, then you have to um, put that all into a bag, the stuff that you aren't using, your good clothes, you know, keep them folded, 
permanent pressed and put them in a dry bag and everything you need um, and go out fishing and then probably by that time you've wasted another 10 to 15 minutes on top of that leaving you with, with less than 20 minutes to go fishing which is not optimal and then when you take those 15 or 20 minutes you come back and you're like crap here we go again pull out the pump deflate the uh, inflatable kayak find some random tree to hide behind or maybe you're lucky and there's a porta potty there and or a, rest, a restroom facility and you can change it back into your dress clothes or do that when you get back to the office depending on what kind of job you're you're working in and get all your your stuff packed up into those bags again and drag them back to, to work feeling one tired frustrated maybe you caught some fish that's good you did what you said you were going to do you went fishing on the water with a boat but you only had a very small amount of time and it just wasn't worth all the effort so that's a reason why I'm starting to think that maybe I shouldn't go through all of these but I'll speed it up so there's the weight oh, I talked about the weight it's a 30 or 40 pound bag back and forth not good the size it's gangly it's it's like a rectangular shape it's wider than your body it doesn't look like a backpack it can't be discreet almost it almost even a sevlar even that's built like a backpack isn't that discreet only real discreet thing i can find is a fishing backpack like the one made by spider wire and it has four nice little uh, medium sized plano style boxes on the bottom on the top it has no like nice little foiled refrigerated uh, section where you can put your lunch and you can do your shoreline fishing no problem and as far as anybody else knows you just have a backpack and there's all the accessories what I was talking about the, the pump the paddles your fishing gear your extra clothes so you can you can go in there and uh, hmm, your dry bag and hopefully you don't want to bring anything else like a Minkota trolley motor or a, a hummingbird radar. Mm -mm. You leave that for the weekend. Um, I talked about changing clothes. And I also talked about less time fishing. Obviously this is horrible. And I'm sorry for stoking your, your interest about using an inflatable kayak in my situation. But let's talk about the situations where this is possible and the fact is the other situations you probably don't even need to use an inflatable kayak which means you can save time inflating and unless you own like a very small car but let's say first and foremost you owned a car and you go to work you can put a kayak a hard shell you can put a, a soft a inflatable kayak inside of it or better yet you can put your hard bottom boat, a John boat, a regular boat, whatever thing, whatever like floats and just lock it to a tree for the day. You know, you know, very good luck. Maybe get somebody's permission at the lake to put it on their property. Maybe talk to the local, um, the boathouse to say, hey, can I, can I lock my boat up at your house, at your, um, your boathouse on this lake or this river? I actually did that today at the Charles River. Um, community boating center and they told me not possible buddy they run their own business there they rent their stuff out only their stuff is there they don't let any other boats park there, park there but you know it's worth a try I try so either you're going to rent their canoes even though they don't open up till 1 or 3, 3 p.m. based on what time of season is not very optimal for lunchtime fishing but it's after lunch but it's still an option Maybe not everybody has that option. So the car is definitely the most functional thing if you want to get out in the boat because you can take it with you in the car, on top of the car, behind the car, or at the lake itself. And if you're somewhere where you can actually keep a boat at the place you're going to fish and let's lock it up, that could be anywhere. If I could lock up my, my uh, boat to a tree, since it's where I, I currently work and fish at is a is a, a state park technically I can't have anything locked up to a tree because one it'll be vandalized and two the um, 
the park rangers will unlock it and put it into their truck and take it home. I'm pretty sure they don't donate it or um, destroy it. They're not really into you know, wasting a good product. More, more likely they'll find a good home somewhere else. That's not me. Unless I have it registered with the state or it's big enough to be registered with the state and then they'll contact me, make me pay a fine and then tell me to pick it up. Either way, they're going to make some money. Uh, and uh, What other way would be good? Yes, I, th I think those are only two ways. It, the boat either needs to be on your vehicle or it needs to be at the location. That's what this has to happen if you want to use a boat. So, whether you choose a, an inflatable canoe uh, or you want to go out and see you know, an inflatable sea kayak or you just want to do your local river, you can get a John boat or you can get uh, something even cooler, which is called a porta boat, which is a uh, folding boat. And it's been around for a long time. It's really cool. It has sizes, sizes between 8 and 14. It's C rated. People use it all the time. It folds up to the size of a, surf, a surfboard. You can just tie it to your roof. And people think you're a surfing, probably, not fishing. Or you can just leave it in a trailer that you make yourself. But maybe you're really cool and you actually own a boat. And you actually work near where your boat is. And you can go to your boat and take it out fishing or just cruising. You know, have a nice little lunchtime cruise. I even take some friends out with you. Yes, make it a social event. So that's basically what I have to say about getting an inflatable fishing kayak and how I'm not going to be able to do that in my current situation because where I currently work doesn't allow me to keep my boat in the water because the land is owned by the state. I also don't drive my car to work because it's a city and parking per day is like $30 and per month is like $300 and that's just not worth it and honestly I don't like driving in the city. It's very frustrating. So if you have the same problem I do, you can think about getting a kayak or something like that or maybe renting one of the one from the local facilities. There probably is a rental place nearby. Hopefully, I have better hours than I do. And if not, hopefully, you don't work in a city and you're able to use your own fishing boats. Hopefully, you have boats. More than one is better. And you can just get out in the water whenever you want to, even if you didn't even think about it. Now I'm telling you to think about it. Get in your boat and go fishing. So, it's Dwight Norris, Fishing at Work, hoping that you can get on your boat somewhere, somehow, hopefully at lunchtime, and go fishing.